chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a train and an SUV with four people inside are involved in a crash. We have details from police just ahead. New research shows the U.S. could have an additional 80,000 coronavirus deaths by November. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Already 80 degrees and that monkeyness, it's here. Is it going to go away? Probably not. <laughs> Michael, let us know more about that in just a bit. And good morning to you. Hallelujah. We made it to Friday, and it is the last day of the month, July 31st. GIF, so happy it's Friday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I suspect our weekend forecast, though, is going to remain hot as we start the month of August and a couple of uh, birthdays around here. Well, I'm going to correct you a little bit about that. Good, the, good. Make, tell me I'm wrong. Well, yeah, I was wrong yesterday, by the way. I said 100. We uh, got up 97. Oh, so. you we're so close. I'll take that one any day <laughs> that we don't hit 100. Um, and we do have some rain chances. You know, we've been talking about rain chances on Saturday, but actually things are going to start to work in here. Uh, actually, in the Hill Country, maybe dinner time, early evening hours. Here's what's going on. Look at that northerly flow aloft in the atmosphere. And this is what we've been talking about, how uh, the, the whole kind of pattern was going to be shifting around a little bit. And all this is working its way down to the now. Obviously, there's not anything out there right now, but it will be developing. And as a matter of fact, as there's actually a bit of a front up there to the north, we're not going to have a, any front move on through here, but it is going to be enough of a triggering mechanism and a focal point for showers and thunderstorms to develop late, uh, maybe late this afternoon, well up to the north and then moving down to the south throughout the evening hours. And the uh, Storm Prediction Center does have the marginal risk for a strong to potentially severe storm, basically along 10 and 90 north of there. It includes the northern half of Bear County and primarily for this evening. Look at the dew point temperatures. A couple of days ago, it was kind of sort of pleasant. Now, mm -mm. And when that all that those storms get going and they feed off of this moist air, that's why some of those could be on the strong side. Could have a couple of uh, decent downpours from that as well. Mold is on the uh, high side right now and throughout the rest of the day, 90 at noon, 98 high temperature and a couple of those showers will be developing up to the north. Then late, late this afternoon, but especially this evening, overnight into tomorrow, and then maybe another round late tomorrow night. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Morning, sir. Good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. A little bit of construction here on 410 and I-10. Now, it was on the westbound ramp. Looks like that traffic convoy is now going eastbound from 410 to I-10. Keep that in mind if you're headed in that way. We also have some construction here. Westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. West Westbound I-10 once again completely shut down from Bernie Stage to Ralph Fair. You're going to have to exit the access road there on Bernie Stage and probably get back on I-10 uh, westbound from Ralph Fair Road. So this usually goes to about 6 a.m. But like I said, westbound I-10 completely shut down. Here's some uh, trans guide footage of it. A lot of construction uh, work going on out there. Please be careful if you head this way. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out why an SUV with four people inside collided with a train. Happened around 11 last night on the northeast side at 410 and FM 78. Police say the SUV crashed crashed into the moving train after exiting the highway. They saw, say four people ran away from the vehicle. So far, Union Pacific says there was no damage to the train itself, and there are no reports so far of injuries or arrests. A possible murder charge for a man accused in a deadly crash on the northwest side. Police say there is evidence and information leading them to believe the driver intentionally swerved into oncoming traffic, hitting another vehicle with two teen girls and a woman inside. It happened on Babcock Road near De Zavala. Officers say the car caught fire after the crash and witnesses helped pull the girls out. A 19 year old girl died on scene. A 40 year old woman and 15 year old girl were taken to the hospital. Police say the suspect tried to run from the scene but is now in custody. San Antonio police are only identifying the suspect as a 26 year old man. It's unclear if alcohol played a role in this case. Well, for the first time in nearly a month, the number of people in the hospital for coronavirus is now under the 1,000 mark in Bear County. Capacity for staffed hospital beds is also improving. 965 people in the hospital. We now have 13% of staffed beds available. There are also declines in those needing extra treatment. 380 people in intensive care and 250 patients are currently on ventilators.
The number of coronavirus cases continues to go up. More than 1,300 were reported in the last report for a total of 40,253 people. A reminder, the city has said test results continue to lag, so they are now giving a seven-day average. Right now, that number is 803. That is 35 more than the previous average. The number is calculated daily. The city says it will help reflect what is happening in our community more closely. The number of deaths increased by five for a total of 347 people. The coronavirus is continuing to have a devastating impact on the U.S. economy. 1.4 million more Americans have filed for unemploy unemployment as a critical unemployment benefit is set to expire. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. This morning, the U.S. grappling with both health and economic emergencies. Coronavirus deaths continue to climb, now over 151,000. Louisiana's governor reporting the state's highest daily death toll in two and a half months. Florida had its third straight day of record deaths. With the tropical storm approaching, public testing sites statewide are shutting down through the weekend. California and North Carolina hit record daily deaths this week, as did Texas. COVID taking its toll inside Houston's United Memorial Medical Center. You got a death wish, catch COVID. The hospital seeing one of its own nurses sickened. A doctor there says he feels like he's fighting two wars. A war against COVID and a war against stupidity. He's frustrated after seeing people on the street not wearing masks or socially distancing. And now a grim new warning from an association of medical colleges. If the nation doesn't change its course and soon, deaths could be well into the multiple hundreds of thousands. The silver lining? FEMA reported fewer cases, down an average of 3% from last week. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying this on CNN. I don't think we need to go to lockdown again. But the virus has hit the economy hard already. Data shows it contracted at an annual rate of nearly 33% from April to June, the worst number since records began at the end of World War II. Consumer spending absolutely dropped off a cliff. That means livelihoods threatened and long lines for food like this scene in Los Angeles. It's helped a lot. 1.4 million people filed for unemployment last week, just as those emergency $600 benefit checks for 30 million Americans are set to expire. Senate Republicans made a last minute attempt to extend these benefits, but at just $200, something the Democrats rejected, calling it a callous political move and saying that we need a more comprehensive plan. But even if these two sides can come to an agreement here, it's something that will likely take weeks. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, it is official. Isaias has strengthened into a hurricane. The National Hurricane Center tweeted the storm has increased to hurricane status early this morning. As of midnight, Isaias was near the southernmost island of the Bahamas, moving northwest with maximum sustained winds of about 80 miles an hour. This after hitting the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico with torrential rainfall. A hurricane warning has been issued for the central and southeastern Bahamas. Well, no charges will be filed against a former Missouri police officer after invest a reinvestigation into the 2014 shooting death of 18 year old Michael Brown. Officer Darren Wilson's shooting of Brown in August of 2014 sparked a federal civil rights inquiry, protest and a national debate. Protests erupted around the country after a grand jury declined to indict Wilson. Wilson shot Whit Brown, who was not armed after a struggle ensued when Wilson stopped Brown on Ferguson Street. Witnesses at the time said the officer fired his gun while Brown's hands were in the air. Wilson has said Brown attacked him and he feared for his life. A family of a U.S. soldier found dead near Fort Hood has taken their story directly to President Donald Trump. The president met with the family of Vanessa Guillen yesterday. He told the family they have his support and that he will personally help pay her funeral expenses. Ahead of the meeting with the president, several dozen demonstrators joined the family at a rally calling for Fort, Fort Hood officials to be held accountable for Guillen's death. They also want better investigations of harassment in the U.S. military. Guillen's remains were found this month following her disappearance back in April. Investigators say a fellow soldier killed her. Just about 440, 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at a teacher's video that's gone viral when she shared tours of what her classroom will look like when students return to school. Lots of starting lineup changes for the San Antonio Spurs as they get ready to take on the Kings tonight. This game is for real as the NBA season restarts. We have a preview. Let's take a look outside with live cam, 80 degrees. That monkeyness is just kind of clinging to you this morning and maybe triple digits 
might be here this weekend. Mike will let us know about that when we come back. Guess what, folks? It is game day. Three weeks after arriving in Orlando, the Spurs now just hours away from resuming their season tonight against the Sacramento Kings. It's the first of eight seeding games for the Silver and Black. Spurs went one and two in their three Orlando bubble exhibition games, which featured lineup changes. Bryn Forbes came off the bench. Derek White started alongside DeJounte Murray. Lonnie Walker started at small forward and DeMar DeRozan at power forward. DeMar is a shooting guard, small forward, but he played the four, which really wasn't a big deal for the 11 year veteran. Watching how the game has changed, you know, it's kind of getting to a point to where, you know, basketball is kind of positionless. You know, um, long as you know how to go out, go out there, play the game of basketball, play the right way. It really don't matter what position you play, you know, um, still do the same thing. Um, you know, you just had a different position, you know, so um, I don't think too much into it. Well, the NBA is all set to conclude the current NBA season. There's talk that they may be forced to use the bubble again for the 2020-2021 season amid the pandemic. The season is currently set to end in mid-October. Next year's season expected to begin as soon as December, and the bubble is working. No players have tested positive for COVID in the last two weeks. That said, what does Lonnie Walker think about playing in the bubble again next season? We'll find out. Spurs and Kings play tonight at 7. Bryn Forbes is out with right quad tightness. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. So excited for the game tonight. 7 o'clock our time. 444, 80 degrees. Well, next we'll hear from a teacher who is sharing what her classroom will look like when students go back to school. A Colorado teacher has found viral fame after posting a video of her socially distanced classroom. ABC's Diane Macedo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, teaching in the pandemic. Here are my desks spaced out three feet apart. Colorado teacher Katie O'Connor just wanted to show what her Colorado Springs classroom will look like when students return in two weeks. I think we're all just struggling because in what world is this an elementary school classroom? Now the video has been viewed over four million times. This is so crazy to me. But O'Connor says it's about more than just a classroom. It's not something that I feel like is really being shared or being talked about what the new normal of schools is. And I just want to be honest with people and show the new reality. We'll have much more of our interview and what every parent needs to know coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Diane Macedo, ABC News, New York. We're trying real hard to keep Officer Nick Solis busy at 448. Officer Nick, I-10, you said construction? Yeah, definitely, I-10 at 410. There's a little bit of red there. Hopefully that gets cleared up here very soon. And some construction on westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. Westbound I-10 completely shut down right now from Bernie Stage to about Ralph Fair. Just uh, please keep that in mind. You're expected to delay if you're heading that way right now. Just went down to light to moderate there, so that's good news. And hopefully this is opened up by uh, 6 a.m. or so. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. There's train Bernie Stage right there. There's a little bit, uh, 10 at Dominion. That's the camera looking uh, from at Bernie Sage. And what else we got here? 10 at Hewerman. Uh, a lot of construction there, but it's opened up. And 281 at Winding Way, uh, flowing smoothly. Thank you, Nick. Encouraging forecast today. That's what we're hearing, and yeah. we're anxious to hear a little bit more about that. I know. No one wants a hot weekend, you know? You no, I mean, well, it's still going to be. It's going to. It's still going to be on the hot side. It, you know, it, it's early August, late July, early August, obviously. But uh, it's encouraging as far as uh, some rain coming in here tonight and tomorrow, maybe even uh, another round again. Perhaps tomorrow night. Talk more about that. Beautiful the clouds uh, were building up, and you get the sun shining off them like that. It's gorgeous. Great KSAC Connect picture. Thank you very much for that. And you really can't see it, obviously, from this vantage point, but oh, Nelly, it's humid once again. 80 in town. That's all we've dropped down so far. 79 Randolph. So, Big difference from past couple of days when we weren't seeing any 80s on the map at this time of the morning, but there are a few of them out there. And the dew points, and I know this doesn't seem like a whole lot, one, two, three degrees, something like that, but when you're going from about 71, 72 up to about 74, 
even 75 in some cases for dew point temperatures. Yes, one or two degrees does make a difference. So we do have more humidity out there this morning uh, and that's going to be the situation later on today with heat index readings getting well up into the hundreds again today. All right, so there's nothing showing up really on the uh, satellite radar loop right now, but you look up to the north and pretty impressive northerly flow coming in here. Obviously, the line of showers and thunderstorms that had developed has broken up, but that doesn't mean all hope is lost because with this northerly flow, there's still going to be these disturbances coming on down in our direction. And so that's why we are going to be seeing a few showers and thunderstorms developing. Now, by noon, this model and there's a chance, I think it's a little over anxious, maybe perhaps later on in the day, but this is a, a good depiction of this line that's going to be working its way down here by mid uh, afternoon. We'll have a couple of uh, showers around again. I think this, this model is pushing things a little bit, but it will still have some of this developing up to the north and then working its way down to the south. That's the best thing to take away from this. And then by dinner time, a couple of scattered showers and a few thunderstorms around here, and they'll still be hanging out into tonight and then also tomorrow morning. And there are some uh, indications that there could be one of those nighttime storm complexes to try and develop and work its way down late tonight into early tomorrow morning. Also right there along 1090 up to the north, uh, there is the marginal risk for a strong to severe storm because with all this humidity out there, that makes the atmosphere very kind of volatile and unstable. And so that's why you can get some of these uh, heavier showers and thunderstorms to uh, develop. So we'll obviously be keeping an eye on that. So today, 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today, I think we have a, f a couple of extra clouds hanging around here to keep us right at 98 degrees, still about uh, two degrees above normal. A few storms are going to start to develop up to the north late this afternoon and then into the evening hours, working their way down to the south. We'll have rain around tomorrow morning, and then it looks like we have another round that's going to be sliding in here tomorrow night into Sunday, and then just a couple of scattered ones around throughout the day on Sunday, maybe one or two Monday. After that, boy, I tell you what, pray for rain this weekend because nothing is showing up and it looks like it's going to be a pretty hot first week of August. You're almost making it sound like it may not rain again till November. I didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> it will. No, Don't I quote know. me on as, that. As far as ending up with, unless we get something later on today, nine tenths, nine hundredths of an inch of rain officially, mm -hmm. one of the driest months in five years, seven years. And you can yeah. really see it around town. A lot of the grass looking pretty yeah. brown. Our extended drought oh, continues. Yeah, I see it in my backyard too. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 452, 80 degrees. Still ahead. Up next, a whole lot of new content is hitting streaming platforms as we head into the weekend. That includes Kermit, Miss Piggy, and the whole Muppets gang. Five Tale, lots of new movies and music hitting streaming services and nominees announced for the MTV Music Awards. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You who were formed by the heat of the galaxy. Beyonce treating fans to something new to stream this weekend. Her visual album, Black is King, featuring music from her Disney soundtrack album, The Lion King, The Gift. <laughs> Kermit, Miss Piggy, and the gang debut Muppets Now, also on Disney+, Plus, and the documentary Rebuilding Paradise from Ron Howard and National Geographic details the comeback of the town of Paradise, California, which was wiped out by fire in 2018. That's available in select theaters and for on-demand rental. Rain on me. Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga lead the nominees for the MTV Video Music Awards. They're up for nine apiece, including a Video of the Year nomination, which they share. Grande featured in Lady Gaga's Rain On Me and the show Embracing the Pandemic, adding categories for Best Music Video from Home and Best Quarantine Performance. The VMA is scheduled for August 30th. The live music business has been struggling in the age of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now you too dropping more cash to help people out. Donating a million and a half bucks specifically for music venues and musicians hit hard during the shutdown. This is on top of the 13 million the band already donated to Irish COVID-19 relief efforts. And happy birthday to actor Wesley Snipes. He's 58 today. While Shark Tank star Mark Cuban is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. How old is he? Six, 62? 
62. Mr. Cuban is 62. Happy birthday, sir. Three minutes till five, 80 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, more details on a new effort to help you keep you and your children safe this summer when families spend more time around the water. Amazon taking its business to the final frontier. We'll tell you why the company is planning to launch more than 3,000 satellites into space. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a man attacked and stabbed multiple times during an argument overnight. We have the latest on his condition just ahead. Plus a look at how local courts could be soon turning to virtual juries for criminal district court cases. Outside with live cam, we've only dropped down to about 80 degrees right now. Lots of humidity, but Mike says the rain chances got a little bump overnight. We'll talk about when that could happen coming up. Good morning to you. Let's wrap up the month of July. It is Friday the 31st. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. My favorite part of the weekends, especially when you can't really go anywhere, sitting on your porch and enjoying a nice little rain shower outside. We would love to see some raindrops around here, Mike Ostrage. When might those be falling on our head? Oh, hey, Mike. And we'll be seeing green <laughs> on the on the radar scope a little bit later on. All right, we'll just uh, jump ahead to uh, some of these uh, uh, radar graphics here, and you can see that there's nothing showing up right now. And as far as <laughs> when we may actually be seeing rain, it is going to be probably later on this afternoon. So if you look well up to the north and you can see that there are a few um, showers, thunderstorms. Some were actually severe earlier. They're way up uh, north and northwest. And even though there's not much up there right now, there is a good flow coming in here out of the north. And there's also some disturbances sliding through. There's actually a bit of a front, which is going to be kind of draping down into the area. It's not going to come through here. It's not going to be. Remember, think back to last year, we had that really weird front that moved through in July. Anyway, that was just a fond memory, but this will help to touch off more showers and thunderstorms actually starting late this afternoon up to the north. And the Storm Prediction Center does have the marginal risk for a couple of those storms to be strong or potentially severe. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats with that. Heat index right now. Step outside. Feels like 85 degrees. There's a bunch of humidity after a little bit of a break. A couple days ago, it, the humidity is definitely back, but that is going to help to feed some potentially heavy downpours, one or two of them out there, and some stronger storms. So partly cloudy, a few storms will be developing over to the north later on, and then also overnight. So some of those will be holding together, and so we'll have some rain around tomorrow in the morning hours, and then it looks like another round may come through late tomorrow night and uh, early Sunday, and then even Sunday. There's possibility that there could be uh, another one of these little disturbances trying to move through here Sunday night into Monday because after that it's going to be heating up. So let's hope for some rain this weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Hi, thanks, Mike. Well, hope you, everyone's having a great Friday morning right now. Traffic looks good. No accidents to report, but a little bit of construction. We got construction here westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. The same construction we've had all week. Uh, looks like the westbound lanes of I-10 from Bernie Stage to Ralph Fair are closed down. Hopefully they open that up by around 6 a.m. Uh, but if you are heading that way, expect a little delay as you're going to have to exit the access road there to get back onto I-10. Let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound 151, 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. Really good times. All right, Trans Guide. Here's some construction on the I-10. This is 10 at Hewerman. Uh, this is before, right before you're going to hit that construction. 281 and Winding Way. That's looking really good, flowing smoothly. And 1604 and Old Hosman flowing good as well. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Late breaking news. Firefighters are battling a house fire on San Antonio's west side. It's in the 8800 block of Flint Valley Street. Our Katrina Weber is live there now. Katrina, what are you seeing? Well, it looks like firefighters have uh, the upper hand on the fire. They have it out. They did have to pull a woman out of the house and she suffered burns. She was taken to a hospital. Let me give you a look at what's going on now. Uh, they're really in the mop-up stages here now. All the flames, all the smoke uh, are out. They're wrapping up their hoses, as you can see. Uh, they got the call a little bit before 4 o'clock this morning. They got here and they say they did find that woman inside the house. They pulled her out of there. She had suffered burns on her neck and upper body. She was rushed to a hospital, but firefighters tell us that it doesn't look like these are life-threatening burns. They say there was one other person uh, who was in or around the home when they got here. That person was not injured. 
Uh, they believe that other people do live in the house, but they were not here and not, uh, not affected. The firefighters are still trying to figure out why the woman wasn't able to get out of the house. That's one of the unanswered questions. They also don't know at this point how the fire started, but they say it does look like it started in a front bedroom. And from what I can see here, it looks like there's some pretty extensive damage throughout the house. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man in his 50s is in critical condition after being stabbed multiple times. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 5700 block of Industry Park Drive. That's on the northeast side near 35 in Riddiman. Police say an argument led to the man being stabbed several times in the upper torso. SAPD is now looking for a suspect in his 30s that ran away from the scene. Well, condolences have been pouring in for a Leon Valley Elementary School cafeteria manager who died of COVID-19. Michelle Villarreal worked at Northside ISD for 10 years. Her husband says they both began feeling sick last month and ended up at the hospital. He got better, but Michelle got worse. She died of COVID-19 last week. It's not only the students in Leon Valley Elementary that she leaves behind. Her own children and husband are left with the loss. She loved those kids. She's always talked about them. She's gone too soon. And she's not going to get to see my my daughter graduate from college or my kids get married. The couple was married for 27 years. 506 right now. Local judge says responses to jury summons sent out last week are encouraging. It's part of a pilot program aimed at conducting virtual trials in civil courts. Paul Venema looks at the odds of taking the next step, which is expanding virtual trials to criminal district courts. 200 of these jury summons seeking six jurors to serve in a virtual civil trial were sent out last week. So far, almost two dozen responses. I think it's moving along as well as expected. Well enough to consider holding virtual trials in criminal district courts. Once we see how this goes, we'll look and see where else we could take it. So we would, we would love it to be possible to do it on a criminal jury trial. I, I just don't know if we can get there. It would be a giant leap, he said. From the number of jurors, six in the pilot program, 12 in a criminal case, to a myriad of constitutional concerns, it would be a challenge. Whether virtual trials or getting juries in court for high-profile cases like that of accused cop killer Otis McCain, Ron Hell says the moratorium on jury trials due to the pandemic has created a huge problem. A part of the issue that we have with these high-profile cases and, and crimes that are considered to be more serious um, those, those are causing a backlog in the system. It's going to take us a long time to resolve those cases. No firm date yet for jury trials. Ron Hill says he's keeping an eye on the COVID case count with public safety his first concern. Ultimately, it's just going to be a matter of time. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. A child can drown in just seconds at a few inches of water right next to you. And you might not even know it because drownings are silent. It's why our case at Community Partners University Health System want to help you keep your children safe this summer when families are spending more time around the water. We spoke with the founder of the Miss Tristan Foundation, Joe Bird, who started the water safety nonprofit after his two year old daughter Tristan drowned in his family's home pool in 2016. He says his daughter died in just a few minutes after a door was left open at his home, her death devastating his family. It's why he urges families to be incredibly vigilant when your child is around a pool or water this summer, even at a community pool or pool party where there are 100 people at the pool with multiple lifeguards, drownings have occurred. It's why Bird urges you to be a water watcher when your child is in the water. Put down your wine. Put down your beer, put down your your adult beverage, and be a lifeguard on duty. Uh, put down your book, put down your cell phone, don't be texting, don't be talking, uh, and be, especially with a small child, be within arm's reach. If you have a home pool, he says it's crucial to have some type of barrier around it and to put alarms on all your doors in your home to alert you if a child gets out. He says when swimming, only use a Coast Guard approved life jacket for young children who are not strong swimmers and advises not to use puddle jumpers or floaties.
Now, Alberta says knowing CPR can also save your child's life. 509, 80 degrees on your Friday morning. Just ahead, Facebook has new deals with three, the three of the largest music companies, Universal, Sony, and Warner, for the right to show music, what that means for your Facebook feed. And next, Coca-Cola is getting into the hard seltzer business, but you might have to travel a little further than you want to get one, at least for now. We will explain. Taking a look outside with live cam, 80 degrees. Weather you can wear out there with all that humidity. Mike will let you know if showers are in our future forecast when we come back. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Coca-Cola is trying its hand at another market. The soda company plans to launch a new hard seltzer. This will be a first for Coca-Cola. The drink will be under the cult brand favorite Topo Chico. The company purchased Topo Chico in 2017 for $220 million. Coke's hard seltzer will be introduced initially in select cities in Latin America later this year. The company has not said if it will eventually bring the product to the U.S. World's largest retailer now selling one very popular brand of meatless burgers. Impossible Foods announced its Impossible Burgers will now be sold at thousands of Walmart stores in the U.S. The company says the burgers have already started hitting store shelves. The plant-based alternative comes in a 12-ounce package and can be found in the fresh meat section in nearly 2,100 locations. The addition of Walmart, Impossible Foods says its burgers are now available in more than 8,000 stores nationwide. Yeah. I've tried a burger made out of something similar to that. It wasn't bad. No, and it's funny because when you're eating it, you're mm -hmm. not sure. You're like, this just it, <laughs> it just tastes <laughs> it just, just tastes like dry meat to me, you know. Right, yeah. And I was like, yes, and then so, someone has to tell me, oh, it's not meat. Do toppings matter at that point? Very much so. Okay, I thought so. Lots of mayo, lots of butter. Right, gotcha. <laughs> mm, can't go wrong with butter. Mm -mm. 514, 80 degrees. Still ahead, the Go-Go's are back. The all-female band is releasing their first new single in 20 years. Mike is already dancing. We'll have a look. Who's singing, Mike or Nick? Or both, both of you? Harmonizing. It's okay. Uh, and next, we'll take a look at a new Walmart uh, tool, rather, Walmart employees have to help shoppers find what they're looking for, whether it's a product or a price. Devin, did you know GEICO is now offering an extra 15% credit on car and motorcycle policies? Okay. That's 15% on top of what GEICO could already save you. So what are you waiting for? DJ Khaled to be your motivational coach? <laughs> Yo, Devin, remember to brush in a circle motion. Thank you, DJ Khaled. Tiny circles, Devin. Do another one. Another one. Is this good? Put in that word, Devin. Don't give up. Geico. Save an extra 15% when you switch by October 7th. Saturdays happen. Pain happens. Ooh. Aleve it. Aleve is proven stronger and longer on pain than Tylenol. <laughs> when pain happens, Aleve it. All day strong. Over time, you go nose blind to the odors in your home. But others smell this. That's why Febreze Plug has two alternating scents, and it eliminates odors for 1,200 hours. Amazon has been given approval to launch thousands of satellites. ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon heading into space. The FCC has given Amazon permission to launch more than 3,000 satellites. They'll create a broadband internet service providing high-speed connections to underserved communities and others. Facebook has reportedly locked down a series of deals to show music videos. Those agreements involve music's three largest companies, Sony, Universal, and Warner, and would put Facebook in competition with YouTube. An official announcement is coming soon. And something new to help Walmart shoppers, workers at the store can now ask Sam when they need help. The voice assistant app has been used in Sam's Club store since last year. It helps employees search for products and prices as well as pull up store maps. Sam can also receive real-time emergency alerts. You have Siri, Alexa, and now Sam. Those are your tech bites. Just about 520. Officer Nick Solis, I hope you're having a happy Friday with some smooth sailing traffic. I'm having a very happy Friday. I wear my comfortable socks so when I stand up it feels <laughs> great.
Yeah. <laughs> but here, here we go. Construction westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. Westbound I-10 is going to be shut down till about 6 a.m. from Bernie Stage to Ralph Fair. You're going to have to exit the access road to continue on I-10. All right, let's uh, look outside at the Trans Guy 35 and 1604. Flowing very smoothly this Friday morning. 410 and Austin Highway in the northeast side. Good. 35 and 37. Great. And uh, 151 and 410. Looking even better. I, I think we all noticed you had a little extra spring in your step this morning. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you're a little feel very good. more pep in your step with those yeah. socks. But you know what's funny? Don't you have kind of comfortable socks? That are really yeah. We, that we all knew exactly what he was talking Especially about. Especially for Thank folks you. that work on their feet, on their feet all yeah. the time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> those Thorlo socks. <laughs> Come on, good times. <laughs> I'm going to be stealing that line. Thank you, sir. Great picture is the, I love it how it says the sun or the cloud tried to block the sun, but the sun kind of won out there. And uh, we will have uh, more clouds around today. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture, by the way. Got our morning clouds starting off and temperatures are warm and dew points are even warmer. We've got a dew point up to 78 degrees right now in Castroville. I think that's the highest or had the highest that we've seen this year so far for a dew point temperature anywhere in the metropolitan area. Uh, it's really humid out there with numbers like this. And even though humidity drops a little bit in the afternoon, we still will see heat index readings up in the low hundreds today. And it's going to be steamy and it's going to be staying hot throughout next week. But we do have some uh, rain to talk about. All right, here's the uh, satellite radar loop over the past 12 hours. And one thing to take note of, obviously there's no rain around here, but notice how this batch of clouds is kind of coming in here here out of the north. We've got this very, very potent northerly airflow in the atmosphere, and there were a, there was a line of showers and thunderstorms. Obviously, that fizzled out, but we keep this northerly flow around, so that's going to continue to push down little disturbances around here. There's actually a front lying across the northern portion of the state. It will not come through here as you think of cool fronts, but it is going to be the focal point. Pretty good uh, mechanism to get some of these showers and storms fired up later on today. So by mid afternoon, We'll start to see a couple of these uh, in portions, northern portions of the hill country, a couple of these showers, and then a few more, and they continue to kind of edge their way to the south by dinner time and also on into this evening. Now, of course, not everybody will be seeing rain, but right now it's a good 40% chance for some uh, showers and a few thunderstorms, and those are going to also extend overnight into early tomorrow morning. Storm Prediction Center has the marginal risk for some of those to become uh, strong to potentially severe high winds and hail being the biggest threats. And one of the reasons is the fact that we've got such humid air out there and it is very unstable, kind of volatile. And so that's why you can get some of those big storms to uh, kind of pop up. And also with all that humidity in there, it's like a sponge and it's going to get squeezed out. So there could be even a couple of localized decent downpours. All right, as far as the tropics is concerned, Isaias has now become a hurricane, category one hurricane. It's going to work its way through the Bahamas, and now the Hurricane Center has it uh, building up to a category two as it works its way in toward Florida, weakening ever so slightly, but still as it just kind of hugs the coast over there in the East Coast, it's going to be a big, big rain producer with that counterclockwise flow around there. Obviously, this will not have any impact on our weather, but that's going to be something for the weekend and may actually delay the return of the Dragon X space capsule, which was supposed to uh, head back on Sunday, but they may have to postpone that for a couple of days. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today, 98 and a couple more clouds hang around here. Keep us just below 100, but of course the heat index readings and then we'll have some showers and thunderstorms developing up to the north late this afternoon, working their way down to the south and that's going to be the case overnight into the first part of the day tomorrow. Then uh, looks like there may be because with this northerly flow in the atmosphere, any little glitch just kind of races right down here. And so another one is going to be potential tomorrow night into Sunday, maybe even Sunday night into Monday because we keep this northerly flow, which is good news for the weekend. That'd be kind of nice because a lot of yeah. folks didn't see anything from Hannah. Mm -mm. It was a little disappointing. And, and even the rain that we had the other day, it was a trace out there at the airport, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, the airport got nothing from, from Hannah last weekend. Okay, and we'll try again. 523, actually it's 524, 80 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a preview of the movie Summerland that opens this weekend in select theaters and on video on demand. 526, the Go-Go's deliver their first single in 20 years and another movie is opting to release in select theaters. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The
The Go-Go's are back. The trailblazing all-female band is releasing Club Zero, their first new single in 20 years on Friday. And that evening, Showtime premieres a documentary on the group. Bassist Kathy Valentine says casual fans may be surprised by the film's focus on the band's punk rock roots. That was the germination, was in that punk rock scene. There wouldn't be a Go-Go if it wasn't for the L.A. punk scene would not be a go-go. So I think uh, it's so, our director, Alison Elwood, was really taken with that part of the narrative. There was someone once. Here we are. So I say, make the most of it. Was she the one you love? Would you think it was strange? No. Gemma Arterton runs the gamut of emotions in Summerland from writer-director Jessica Swale. Arterton and Swale have worked together before, so the actress wasn't surprised by the demands of the role. She always does this. She writes scenes where the actor starts in one place and by the end is in a totally different place and they've got a second to change. You know, there's some one thing that happens which just makes them change uh, emotion or they go from zero to 60 in one second, which is always quite daunting as an actor. Where's Summerland? It's a myth. Stories have to come from somewhere. Summerland opens this weekend in select theaters and on VOD. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's 528 and 80 degrees. Still ahead next half hour as first time unemployment claims in the U.S. jump for a second week in a row. We'll tell you how lawmakers in D.C. are reacting to a new plan to help those struggling financially. And could Election Day 2020 be delayed? How Republicans and Democrats are reacting to a tweet sent out by President Trump. TTIF, good morning to you. It is Friday, July 31st. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for waking up with us this morning. Sounds like we've got another shot at some rain this weekend. Our chances have gotten a little bit above bump. I would like to take those chances. Yes, indeed. And uh, hopefully for a lot of folks, they do come to be. And it's kind of moved up a little bit, the timing, because it had looked like it was just going to be uh, basically uh, tomorrow, the better rain chances. But now we're going to start to see some things brewing. Looks like even late this afternoon, well up in northern portions of the hill country. Mostly cloudy this morning, very warm, very humid. Humidity has gone up this morning. And then partly cloudy skies by noon will be right around 90 degrees. Later on this afternoon, storms are going to start to develop. There's actually a bit of a uh, front now. We're not going to get a big front to move through here. Don't get your hopes up for that. But this is going to continue to kind of drift down to the south, and it's going to be the, the triggering mechanism. And as the afternoon heats up, we'll see more of those uh, showers and storms basically up to the north, and they will continue to push their way down to the south into the evening hours. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms, and it looks like those are going to be then kind of hanging around overnight and into tomorrow morning. May do it again tomorrow night, and even, well, there's an outside chance Sunday night as well. For today, though, and especially this evening, there is the marginal risk for a couple of those storms to be strong to severe. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats. 80 right now. We are 10 degrees above normal, and we're going to make it up to 98 later on today. And again, rain developing up to the north, working its way down to the south. Encouraging forecast. Hopefully you get rain this week because there's not much after this weekend because there's not much after that. Details coming up. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, Nick? Not much right now, Mike. A lot of green on the screen. No accidents to report, which is always good news. We do have some construction. If you're just waking up, westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road is completely shut down to Ralph Fair Road. You're going to have to exit the access road to get back on the highway there. Just expect a little bit of delay if you're heading that way. But right now, it doesn't seem too bad. Some green there on that access road, so that's always good news. Drive times, if we're westbound, I-10 from the northwest side at 35 to 1604, that's 12 minutes. And then if you're going back eastbound from 10 to 1604 to 35, it's 13 minutes. Really good times there. All right, outside here is that construction, I-10 at the Dominion. Looks like they're starting to open up a one lane there, and maybe they're even picking up those uh, cones now and opening, opening it up. Don't want to make any guarantees, but looks like we got some movement on I-10 at Dominion. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you very much, sir. A federal program that provides unemployed Americans an extra $600 a week expires today. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, leaders on the Hill aren't on the same page for a new plan to help those struggling financially. Millions of Americans nationwide are worried about staying afloat financially. 
every month, even working multiple jobs, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. First time unemployment claims in the U.S. are up for the second week in a row, and the Aspen Institute says many people are at risk of finding themselves without a place to live. What we are facing is a possible uh, mass eviction scenario. The coronavirus pandemic, which has infected nearly four and a half million Americans, according to Johns Hopkins University, has also crippled the economy. The, the whole prospect of having a business in this climate seems impossible. While some are living hand to mouth, Republicans and Democrats aren't seeing eye to eye on a jobless benefit plan. Both sides say funding is needed. They just can't agree on how to move forward. If our Democratic colleagues had acted with the urgency that struggling people deserve, we could right now be finishing up a major bipartisan package. We got here because our Republican colleagues couldn't get their act together. They still don't have their act together. And now they're worried. But instead of being serious in negotiating, they have created a stunt. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Victims of the 2019 El Paso shooting being honored on a digital wall at the city's Museum of History. The community is being encouraged to submit videos or photos. It's all to commemorate the lives and legacies of 23 people shot and killed when a gunman opened fire at a Walmart on August 3rd of last year. The director of the museum says the memorial will help heal the community. The American Cancer Society now recommends that cervical cancer screening start at age 25 instead of 21. The decision to raise the age for screenings comes as HPV vaccinations seem to be working. Cervical cancer is low in the 20 to 24 year female age group, and the numbers are expected to decrease as vaccine use increases. The ACS says getting an HPV test every five years can reduce the risk of cervical cancer more effectively than a pap test done every three. Some doctors think cervical cancer can be eradicated in our lifetime with vaccines, regular screening and new treatments. Well, hopefully you joined us on GMSA at 9 yesterday where we watched it live. NASA launching the rover Perseverance on Thursday to set to travel 65 million miles to Mars and a San Antonio native helped make the mission happen. Philip Hargrove is a trajectory analyst and he was a part of the group that helped determine the safest path for the rocket that carries the rover, something he's been working on for two years. But his love for space began at an early age Hargrove would spend his summers in Houston at the Johnson Space Camp, where he'd learned about mission control. Hargrove has seen over 40 launches in his three and a half years with NASA, but yesterday's launch had a different feeling. Just thinking, like, yeah, this is really happening instead of it just being on my computer is a, a pretty special moment. NASA is expecting Perseverance to land on Mars sometime in February of 2021. Its mission will be to collect evidence that showed there were once there was once life on the red planet. And Hargrove actually went to Churchill High School. Churchill High School, he right here off, in San Antonio. He went off to graduate from Stanford as well, so way to wow. go. Proud Making Churchill Charger. San Antonio proud. 537, 80 degrees. Still ahead, teachers and parents are being forced to adjust to new education requirements during the pandemic. We'll take a look at what that means for extracurricular activities like band and sports. And it set off a firestorm yesterday. Republicans and Democrats reacting to a tweet sent by President Trump suggesting that Election Day should be delayed. Take a look outside with live cam 80 degrees. It's muggy out there, but will we need our umbrellas? This weekend, Michael let us know in just a bit. In one of his most recent messages on Twitter, the president suggested that Election Day be delayed. The message set off a firestorm with both Republican and Democratic leaders jumping in. ABC's Terry Moran has more. No president has ever said anything like it, but President Trump behind in the polls with a cratering economy and a pandemic out of control, tweeting with universal mail-in voting, 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be a great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly, securely, and safely vote. Later, the president tried to explain what he meant. Do I want to see a day change? No. But I don't want to see a crooked election. This election will be the most rigged election in history if that happens. That's a flip-flop. In April, Trump said this. I never even thought of changing the date of the election. Why would I do that? November 3rd. It's a good number. 
Uh, no, I look forward to that election. Trump's statement today about delaying an American election was shot down immediately by Democrats and Republicans. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell in an interview in Kentucky. Never in the history of the country, uh, through wars, uh, depressions, and the Civil War, have we ever not had a federally scheduled election on time. But Joe Biden has been warning for weeks Trump might try to use the pandemic to delay or delegitimize the election. It's my greatest concern. My single greatest concern. This president's going to try to steal this election. This is a guy who said that all mail-in ballots are fraudulent, voting by mail, while he sits behind the desk in the Oval Office and writes his mail-in ballot to vote in the primary. That was ABC's Terry Moran reporting. It's 542 and 80 degrees. Up next, the pandemic has put the future of high school athletics this fall in jeopardy. A look at how students, parents, and schools are reacting. Five forty-five. with August fast approaching, the upcoming school year has been on a lot of people's minds. Teachers and parents are being forced to adjust to educating during a global pandemic. And it's not just classes impacted, extracurriculars and sports are also taking a big hit. For this week's episode of Case That Explains, RJ Marquez takes a look at the unprecedented decision from UIL to start the football season late. <laughs> There's nothing like Friday night football in Texas, but like everything else in our state, the coronavirus pandemic has put the future of high school athletics this fall in jeopardy. I can't remember in all my years of doing high school football, and that takes me all the way back to when I was you know, 16 years old. First of all, the high school football season has never been delayed, and now being, being delayed due to a virus. Coaches are normally getting ready for August camps, but that will have to wait. The University Interscholastic League delayed the start of practice for the larger school districts in Texas until September 7th, with volleyball games starting September 14th and football starting 10 days later. UIL is also limiting fans in the stands to 50% capacity. Those at games will be asked to wear face coverings and social distance. The biggest thing for me and, and for all of us, I think, is, is just coming to the realization that things are going to be different. I mean, you make adjustments as you go, and I talk to our kids about it all the time. You just adapt, improvise, and overcome. We have to be flexible with this, and it has to be a sliding scale. These COVID cases still continue on through August, and it's going to have to be pushed back even further, perhaps even to the spring. Workouts and conditioning camps held earlier this summer help coaches and players adjust to new health and safety protocols, but a spike in COVID cases put those camps on hold. Now coaches are missing out on important daily interactions with players. And that opportunity to visit with kids, to, to talk life, to talk, you know, whatever it is and problems and help with problem solving and those kind of things. School is so much bigger than pen and paper or in our regards, football, X and O's. High school sports, specifically football, are a way of life across Texas, so it would be hard to imagine any stadium across the state, including the iconic Alamo Stadium right here in San Antonio, staying empty this fall. And I think people are proud of where they grew up. They're proud of where they went to high school. They enjoy watching the games. They enjoy hearing the score. They enjoy watching the highlights. So it brings the community together. I think athletics lie at the heart and soul of every community. Still, Coach Carroll says a sport shouldn't be valued more than health and human lives. And while he waits to see what will happen, he trusts that the UIL and coaches across the state will keep that in mind. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Well, KSAT explains back to school during a pandemic is now available to stream on demand on the KSAT TV app. That's available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other smart TV devices. Time for a look at Time Saver traffic at 548. Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. What's, everything's going good right now. Let's take a look at this construction zone at I-10 Dominion. Looks like it's opening up. One lane there opens, or two lanes, actually. It looks like we have one more lane to go. Usually around 637, that last lane opens up there, and things will be flowing very smoothly on I-10 at Dominion. But until then, expect just a little bit of a delay if you have to go westbound from 16 to 4 to Bernie. Thank you, Nick. If your backyard rain gauge hasn't seen a drop in a while, mm -hmm. Mike has some good news going into this weekend. Some of us got some rain uh, a couple of days ago and it's got a little bit in my backyard, but most everybody is just uh, and we're going to end up unless we get a deluge tonight or anything. Uh, it'll be nine hundredths of an inch of rain officially for the month of July out there at the airport. And again, some folks did you know, have picked up more than that, but those are some of the official numbers, so that's not necessarily good news, but there is good news. Actually, starting later on tonight and uh, even into this weekend, beautiful, beautiful sunset there looking over the water. 
Boy, you never get tired of looking at those sunset shots over the looking over the water. We've got uh, clouds around this morning. I uh, had a few of them walking outside. And also when you walked out when you walk outside this morning, get ready. We're at 80 degrees, uh, basically mid upper 70s and low 80s. So it is warmer than it has been the past couple of mornings. And also there's a bunch more humidity. Now late this afternoon, especially going into tonight, Storm Prediction Center does have a marginal risk for severe storms, pretty much cutting our viewing area in half. Uh, horizontally right along 10 and 90. The northern half of uh, Bear County is included in that uh, severe risk, which would be high winds and hail from some of these storms that are going to be developing later on. Notice how even though there's nothing around here right now, we've got this flow coming in out of the north and it's a very pronounced northerly flow. And the thing with this is it it does uh, send little disturbances on through here that can kind of pop up out of nowhere sometimes. But in this situation, there's actually a front which is lying across the northern portion of the state that's going to continue to work its way down to the south. That's going to be the triggering mechanism and the focal point for some of these showers and thunderstorms. So even as early as noon, early afternoon, a few of those showers, the potential for some of those trying to develop up in northern portions of the hill country, and they'll continue to push their way down to the south throughout the mid and late afternoon and by dinner time, we'll have a couple of showers and even a, a thunderstorm or two around the area. And I think a better chance then especially moves in here tonight and then especially the overnight hours with some of those uh, kind of nighttime storm complexes trying to develop and work their way on through here. So we'll have some rain around. It looks like maybe the majority of it could be leaning a little more to the uh, east, but there'll still be that chance for some of those showers. The reason for it is that high has kind of taken over. See this little wave down here over there along the Pacific Coast of Mexico. That was what gave us some of that rain, that little bit of a, a low a couple of days ago. But now the high is sort of taken over. And what's interesting is even though we're on the right hand side of it, which is usually the sinking side in the atmosphere, like I said, with this pronounced northerly flow, you get some of these little disturbances to slide on through here. And in this case, it's actually a front. Again, got to emphasize we're not going to have any drop in temperatures. As a matter of fact, as time goes on, temperatures are going to be going up. Although with the cloud cover and some rain, I think we are held down somewhat tomorrow, mid 90s. But we keep this uh, fairly strong northerly flow around here, even through Sunday night. And there are some indications that a couple of more of these little disturbances would slide down through one tomorrow night and then again on Sunday night. So we may have some overnight rain, or at least a chance of it the next few evenings. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today, 98. I think we keep enough clouds around to stay just shy of 100, like was the case yesterday. Some of those uh, showers and storms will be developing late, late this afternoon as and also dinner time and then into this evening kind of holding together into the early morning hours tomorrow, then I think we have another shot at some of those maybe nighttime uh, showers, storms tomorrow night, perhaps even Sunday night with this pattern we're in right now. And then after that, the pattern's gonna turn to triple digits. You, you were talking about the rain, very matter of fact, you started grinning about the triple digits. I thought it would be the reverse. I think it's kind of like a yeah. mm, it, that wasn't that, a good, yeah grin, a grin and bear it uh, type thing. Gotcha. So the triple okay. dudes. Okay, I understand. You've been burned no, before. I, I get don't, it. I don't like. <laughs> yes, I have been sunburned before. Uh, I don't like triple. You dudes. know. Oh, I know. Disappointment comes with it, Mike. Uh, but hopefully, we'll all get some rain this right. weekend. Yep, or a better chance. 552, 80 degrees. Up next, if you've ever wanted to play a space invader bent on destroying humanity, a new video game out this week puts you in the boots of a laser-toting alien. We'll have a preview. Finally, a game that speaks to me. A pick three numbers, 600, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 9418, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 9, 11, 20, 26, 28, Texas 2-step, 4, 14, 17, 18, Bonus ball 15. We're not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens causing mayhem in Destroy All Humans. Destroy All Humans is absolutely a tongue-in-cheek kind of variation on the open world uh, exploration, uh, action adventure kind of theme that we saw uh, really popularized by games like Grand Theft Auto. I hereby give you official permission to destroy all 
humans. Uh, you play a little character named Crypto, and you landed your spaceship. It's the late 50s, and so there is like a Pleasantville type of aesthetic with the, the world around you. Communist spies infiltrated a small country fair in the American heartland, and they destroyed the whole fairground. And you're going to be doing all kinds of interesting things that kind of fly in the face of some of the artifice of the 1950s. And also, there's a nice little sort of undercurrent of commentary about, uh, uh, you know, how silly the escapism of video games can be. Um, and also how fun these activities can be for us as well. This planet is now a territory of the Furon Empire. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Still ahead in our next half hour, new research showing just how important it is for kids to go to school. Look at some of the way, top ways a child's future is impacted if they skip out on the classroom. Of course, all, all this is affected by the pandemic. Trans guy will get an update from Officer Nick Solis. He is here with Time Saver Traffic and an update on rain chances this weekend. Mike says they have improved perhaps as early as later today. Details to come. A man is fighting for his life this morning after being stabbed at a northeast side motel. And right now, police cannot find the suspect. Teachers are facing a lot of pressure as the school year approaches, and that is causing educators all around the state to think about retiring earlier than they planned. If you had all but given up on chances of rain in the month of July, there is a little bit of hope. Mike has your weekend forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And thank goodness it's Friday. Good morning to you. It's Friday, July 31st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And hopefully we can leave you with some good news into the weekend with some possible rain. It'd be nice to wrap up the month with a chance out of a few raindrops. Mike Oster H. Yes, indeed. And it's actually, you know, because we've been talking about how Saturday was going to be the day that uh, we had the better shot for some rain. And now it's it's kind of uh, moved up in time a little bit. So we're actually looking at uh, perhaps even late this afternoon to see some of those showers trying to develop up to the uh, the north and then uh, moving down through the evening hours. So this is what it looks like up there to the north of us. And uh, this is the satellite radar loop. And you can see now I Obviously, this line has fallen apart, but we still have this very pronounced northerly flow, and there's actually somewhat of a front lying up along the northern portion of the state. No, it's not going to move on through here, but it will be sort of the uh, the focal point and the triggering mechanism for some showers and thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, uh, some of those could be on the stronger side, potentially severe. There's the marginal risk in the northern half of our viewing area. Pretty much dividing line is 10 and 90 north of there and includes the northern half of Bear County. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats with this. Again, this is going to start late this afternoon, northern portions of the hill country, and then continue to kind of drift down to the south. It's warm and humid out there. Temperatures are in the upper 70s and low 80s around here, so we'll be right around um, 79, 80 this morning. And then a few clouds hanging around. We'll make it up to 90 today at noon and continue up from there just above normal up to 98. Of course, with the humidity left over, it's going to feel like it's well up into the uh, low hundreds. And we'll start to see, again, late this afternoon, some of those showers and storms up to the north maybe even a couple of more chances over the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Solis. And once again, you got a pretty uh, blank map there, don't you? Blank map, a little bit of construction, but that's good. I will take that over accidents on any day. Oh, yeah. All right, so if you're headed to work right now, it's going to be a smooth ride. A lot of green on the screen. The construction we did have here on I-10 seems to be clearing up now. No longer shut down completely, but expect a little bit of delay as they do clean up uh, those barrels there. Let's take a look at some drive times. 10 eastbound from uh, 10 eastbound from FM 46 to 1604. That's 38 minutes. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest, side of 1604 to 35 13 minutes really good times there all right taking a look at the trans guy tenant dominion there you go you have one lane still blocked off but traffic is flowing a little bit uh, more smoothly than it was earlier and that's always good news all right everyone well i hope you get to work safely wear that seatbelt and go to the speed limit mark thank you nick we have late breaking news right now a teenager has been shot and killed ambushed according to san antonio police outside a home on the city's north side. Our Katrina Weber is live in the 7600 block of McCullough Avenue with that story. Katrina, how did it happen? 
Well, based on what police tell us, it happened very quickly. The teen who was shot and killed was with his girlfriend at the time. She told police that they had just walked outside their home to smoke with friends, as she put it, when he was suddenly shot in the head. This is a house right across the street. A police are still working there, uh, talking to family members who have come to the scene, obviously grief stricken. Uh, they also have been just trying to get some more information about exactly what happened. Now, I don't want to show too much because we understand that the teen's body is still here outside the home. But again, this was right around 4.30 this morning when they got the call here. And uh, according to the girlfriend, they just came outside to smoke with friends when someone suddenly, one of those friends, shot him in the head. Police uh, say that there were three people involved. They took off running toward Oblate, and that is the last time that they have seen them. They are still, uh, again, trying to get more information, a better description of those suspects, because at this point they say they don't have a whole lot to go on. But again, a 17-year-old shot and killed outside a home here on McCullough Avenue. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, new this morning, a man is in the hospital with a life-threatening stab wound. San Antonio police say a man in his 50s got into an argument at a travel in around 1230 this morning in the 5700 block of Industry Park. That's on the city's northeast side near I-35 in Riddiman. Police say that argument led to a man pulling out a knife and stabbing the victim. He was taken to Bamsey and is in, and is in critical condition. The suspect ran away and police are still trying to find him. San Antonio police are looking for four people who were in an SUV that ran into a train. Police say a driver exited 410 at FM 78 around 11 last night. That driver then drove right into a Union Pacific train. Police say the four people then jumped out and ran off. Union Pacific is working with SAPD and they say there was no damage to the train itself. An arrest affidavit says distinctive red shoes helped identify this man who broke into City Hall, Universal City on July 27th. The affidavit says Andreas Madrigal tried accessing secured offices by climbing through ceiling tiles and a wall from the adjacent city courtroom. He had been arrested the day before. Madrigal could not get into the room, so he accessed the city records on a computer by using the password he found under the keyboard. Surveillance video caught the whole thing on camera and the officer who originally arrested Madrigal was able to identify him in part because of the same red shoes he was wearing. More than 40,000 people have been infected with COVID-19 here in Bear County since the pandemic began. Metro Health confirming more than 1,300 new cases yesterday. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven day average is over 800 cases per day. Five people have also died than new totals, bringing the total number of deaths to 347. Well, one of those deaths was a Leon Valley Elementary School cafeteria manager. Michelle Villarreal worked at Northside ISD for 10 years. Her husband, Marcos, says they both began feeling sick last month and ended up at the hospital. He recovered, but Michelle didn't. It's not only the students of Leon Valley Elementary that she leaves behind. Her own children and her husband feel the loss as well. She loved those kids. She's always talked about them. She's gone too soon. And she's not going to get to see my, my daughter graduate from college. Or my kids get married. They were married for 27 years. Teachers on the verge of retirement could be pushed into it by the pandemic. Tim Lee with the Texas Retired Teachers Association says his office is getting a lot of calls from educators in their 60s. They're asking questions about the retirement process. Average age of a teacher to retire in Texas is 62. Says a lot of teachers might test the waters if they decide they want to retire because of challenges and safety concerns amid the coronavirus pandemic. The results do not surprise me. I think that educators, you know, they're they're normal folks just like the rest of us. They're you know they're just around uh, more populated and densely populated areas. It's very diff difficult to control the behavior of of everybody that's in that school all the time. We check to see what the retirement numbers look like at area school districts. You can find that information right now on KSAT.com. Well, today, two COVID-19 vaccine trials will be underway in South Texas. The double-blind Pfizer trial started yesterday, and a Moderna trial will start later today. The group studying the vaccine are encouraging people at high risk, like medical professionals and those 65 and over, to participate. Researchers say you cannot become infected with the virus in the study because the vaccine is not live. To find out how to apply, just go to KSAT.com.
If you live in Guadalupe County, you can be tested for COVID-19 for free today. It'll take place at the Schertz Community Center from 8 this morning to 4 in the afternoon. You do not need to schedule an appointment. However, testing will only take place while supplies last. Well, it's been more than four months, but the Spurs are finally getting ready for their next regular season game. Silver and Black reopened the season tonight against the Sacramento Kings inside the NBA bubble over in Orlando. During the season's pause, social justice issues have emerged around the country, which is why the Spurs jerseys will look a little different tonight. Each player will have the opportunity to wear messages on the uniforms rather than their names in the first four games. Veteran Spurs star DeMar DeRozan explains why he chose the message education reform for the back of his jersey. Having an education reform of understanding what injustice, oppression, um, economic values, um, all these elements that we miss out growing up, coming, growing up in school that we don't get taught, you know. So for me, having that element um, being changed in, in putting that foundation into the kids and to the youth of helping them understand life as we just now figuring out at 30 years old will make our generation much, much more educated and better. Back to the game. Tip off for Spurs Kings scheduled tonight, 7 o'clock our time. It'll be the first of eight games for our Spurs and try to make it to that eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. Right now, they are four games behind the Memphis Grizzlies. Tonight's game will air on Fox Sports Southwest. But if you can't watch it or just can't get enough of our Spurs, be sure to follow KSAT 12 Sports and watch GMSA tomorrow morning for the game's top moments. Oh, we've all been waiting for it. I am so excited to watch the guys tonight, and I'll be doing so. Good luck, Spurs. Right now, we are at 610 on your Friday morning, 80 degrees. A Texas favorite is now getting a twist. We will learn more about Coca-Cola's plans for a hard Topo Chico. A local nonprofit helping spread awareness about children drowning in pools. We'll hear from the Miss Tristan Foundation after the break. First, let's take a look outside with live cam. Already 80 degrees and you really feel the humidity out there, but there might be a chance for some showers later today and through the weekend. Mike will let you know about that when we come back. Six fourteen. So far this year in Texas, 51 kids under the age of 14 have drowned. That's according to a group called the Miss Tristan Foundation. The nonprofit works with our KSAT Community Partners University Health System to keep parents informed on how to prevent your child from drowning. We spoke with the founder of Miss Tristan Foundation, Joe Bird, who started the water safety nonprofit after his two-year-old daughter, Tristan, drowned in his family's home pool in 2016. He says his daughter died in just a few minutes after a door was left open at his home, her death devastating his family. If you have a home pool, he says it is crucial to have some type of barrier around it, to put alarms on all your doors in your home to alert you if a child gets out. Pool barriers, uh, there are different fences. Uh, some people promote one kind of fence as opposed to another. I, I'm just a pool barrier guy. Uh, there's nets you can put over the pool. Uh, have your child at the earliest possible age get some survival swim lessons. He says when swimming, only use a Coast Guard approved life jacket for young children who are not strong swimmers and advises not to use puddle jumpers or floaties. Most importantly, he says no CPR because it can save your child's life. He also mentioned in that interview that if um, for those early on swimming lessons, mm -hmm. six months of age is as early as you can start them. That's early, but makes sense though. Mm -hmm. Get them started. 615 now, 80 degrees. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. But first, we're going to head over to Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, right now we're dealing with one accident. It's going to be northbound 151 uh, just before the exit at North Hunt Lane. It looks like a two-vehicle accident. Wreckers are on scene. Both vehicles need to be towed there. This one could cause some delays if that accident isn't cleared up here in the next 20 minutes or so. Just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide now. I-10 and Dominion still. We have, a construct we have the construction still there. One lane still closed off, but that those westbound lanes are starting to flow a little more smoothly now, which is good news for everyone.
Thank you, Nick. Go swipe the iPad over there. Why? 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 I forgot to change the picture. You want me to? I was, I was doing. No, no, no. Mark can. Oh, oh. He can. Go. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, put him go, Mark. Go. So, anyway, um, yeah, we have got some rain chances coming up here, and KSAT Connect picture. Is that what you this want? Is an oh, he did it. Beautiful one. There you go. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. I, I haven't That'll seen you move that five dollars. I can't remember <laughs> when. So when you what? You what? I said, I haven't seen you move that quick, and I can't remember when. Yeah, me neither. No, I was going to say it'll be $5, please. <laughs> Our cup of coffee, really good cup of coffee. We got coffee, uh, right? I meant I'm a team player and no problem. Go, team, go. <laughs> hey, uh, beautiful view. The moon is going to be full on Monday, and, of course, it is the full sturgeon moon, according to the uh, old farmer's almanac and some of the... Uh, Indian Native American lore up around the Great Lakes there, but boy, it's a beautiful view. I don't know if it's going to be a good moon viewing weather tonight. That's not a bad thing because we do have uh, some clouds moving in here and, and we're going to be seeing some rain chances coming up here. And as you can see, we've got plenty of clouds. It's starting to lighten up a little bit. Maybe the early, early signs of the sunrise this morning. These numbers, the dew points, when I was talking about this, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you figure out relative humidity. You get above 60, you start to notice the humidity. You get above 70, you really notice it. You get in the mid 70s and it's just ridiculous humidity out there. So this is... Uh, this is almost kind of steam bath sort of air out there, which is definitely the case around Castroville with the dew point of 77, 76 right now in uh, Helotus. And so heat index readings right now are 10 degrees above the, it feels like it's 10 degrees above the normal low temperature, which is 75. So we've got a nice northerly flow in the atmosphere, which is kind of unusual for this time of year. Usually the flow is just basically off the Gulf of Mexico. And so with this flow, a lot of times you get some of those little uh, nighttime storm complexes, little disturbances to pop up out in the western portion of the state and slide on through here. Well, in this case, we actually have a, a front which is lying across the northern part of the state, and this is the focal point for some of these showers and thunderstorms. Obviously, the latest batch did die down, but that front is still going to continue to slowly work its way down in our direction. As it produces some of these showers and storms, some could become strong or potentially severe with the uh, hurry, with the pardon me, Storm Prediction Center, not the Hurricane Center, uh, saying a marginal risk for strong or high winds and hail. That would be the biggest threat with some of these storms. And they're going to start to show up by probably early afternoon, well up in northern portions of the hill country, and then by mid-afternoon, continue to work their way down. And even by dinner time, a few of those showers and thunderstorms around here. We'll still have some working their way down through here overnight and the first part of the day tomorrow. And then it looks like with this northerly flow, even by the late afternoon hours, we'll still have a couple of uh, shower storms around. And then another kind of a batch of those overnight storms would develop and work their way down in our direction tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. So with this northerly flow, that's kind of the, the best case scenario is to have some of these nighttime storms developing and these little disturbances moving on through here the next couple of evenings. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Later on this afternoon, 98 high temperature. Again, partly cloudy, and some of those showers and thunderstorms will start to develop up to the north and continue to work their way down south, and that's going to be the evening hours and then tomorrow morning. And then another batch looks like it will try and develop late tomorrow into early Sunday, and there's the possibility of seeing that even Sunday into Monday. I don't have it depicted on this uh, seven-day, but there is that chance then early Monday morning for the rain because after that, it's just going to be very hot. And the best thing about this forecast, Sarah, there's a good chance all weekend Mike's going to be in his front yard doing this. <laughs> right? And, and he also, or, or looking at your phone because if you get the uh, KSAT weather app, you get those there you go. messages saying you might mm -hmm. have some rain near you and you can check yep. out radar too. Then you know when to go outside and look up. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank right you now it's 620, 80 degrees. A Colorado teacher has found viral fame after posting a video of her socially distanced classroom. We'll have the details in your GMA first look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Want to brain better? Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva has clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Memory, focus, accuracy, learning, and concentration. Try our new gummies for 30 days and see the difference. When was the last time you really looked out the window? What do you see? 
the awakening of the rising sun or light dancing across the mountaintops. Look for a moment longer and you'll see beauty is all around us. Like a painting, moving in the wind, speaking to the soul. The world flashing past, still yet to explore. Look out the window. The summer of Jeep is here. With employee pricing, get 5,103 below MSRP on the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Hurry, offer ends soon. Ready to shine from the inside out? Try Nature's Bounty Hair, Skin, and Nails Gummies. The number one brand to support silky hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. Beauty comes naturally, only from Nature's Bounty. In this morning's GMA First Look, teaching in the pandemic. Here are my desks spaced out three feet apart. Colorado teacher Katie O'Connor just wanted to show what her Colorado Springs classroom will look like when students return in two weeks. I think we're all just struggling because in what world is this an elementary school classroom? Now the video has been viewed over four million times. This is so crazy to me. But O'Connor says it's about more than just a classroom. It's not something that I feel like is really being shared and being talked about what the new normal of schools is. And I just want to be honest with people and show the new reality. We'll have much more of our interview and what every parent needs to know coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Diane Macedo, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, several classic sitcoms from the 90s are making a comeback on Netflix. It's adding seven classic African-American shows from the 1990s and early 2000s. The list includes hit shows like Sister, Sister, Moesha, and The Game. The sitcoms will all start streaming on Netflix in the weeks to come. Amazon heading to space. The Federal Communications Commission has given the company permission to launch more than 3,000 satellites, all sent via Amazon Prime, so we're good. Uh, they will create a broadband internet service, which the company hopes will provide high-speed connections to underserved communities. Well, Facebook has reportedly locked down a deal to show music videos. Those agreements involve music's three largest companies, Sony, Universal, and Warner, and would put Facebook in competition with YouTube. An official announcement is expected to come soon. There's something new to help Walmart shoppers. Workers at the store can now ask Sam when they need help. The voice assistant app has been used in Sam's Club store since last year. Helps employees search for products and prices as well as pull up store maps. Sam can also reveal real-time emergency alerts. And speaking of Walmart, the world's largest retailer is now selling the Impossible Burger. Impossible Foods announced its products will now be sold at thousands of Walmart stores in the U.S. The company says the burgers started hitting store shelves yesterday. And here's something that could help t uh, take the, make the Texas summer months a little more bearable. Coca-Cola is entering the hard seltzer biz, creating a Topo Chico hard seltzer. Coke's hard seltzer will be introduced initially in select cities in Latin America later this year. However, the company has not said when it will bring the product to the U.S., but we know that there's a good chance if they do, not going to be able to make them fast enough. Oh, my gosh, it'll be, like, wild here. It's a game-changing market, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 627, 80 degrees. Well, missing school can have a lasting impact on your child. In our next half hour, we will learn how it could affect them. A teenager is gunned down just steps from his front door. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber here on the north side where police are searching for a killer. I'll have that story. New research shows the U.S. could have an additional 80,000 coronavirus deaths by November. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. Outside with live cam, wouldn't it be weird if we had a better chance of rain this weekend than we did with Hannah in the area last weekend? We'll talk about uh, those chances with Mike Osterhage coming up. TGIF, we made it to the end of the week and the end of the month. It is Friday, July 31st. Happy Friday. Thank you for starting your Friday morning with us. And it would be weird if we had more rain this weekend than la last week. It was kind of a letdown. It kind of was a letdown. And we're going to talk to Mike in just one moment. Real quick, a uh, detour to uh, Officer Nick Solis. That was a good one, Mike. Detour. Yeah, things are looking good. <laughs> one accident right now, northbound 151. Other than that, everything looks good. Uh, Nick's easily entertained by me. <laughs> yeah. And always a smile on his face. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, end of July. Does it seem like any kind of like what happened to July? Uh, okay. The year has what been a blur. What happened in the past mm -hmm. yeah, six months? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, I mean, 
cruising on by and yes it would be nice that we end if we ended up the month with some more rain because we've only had nine hundredths of an inch of rain officially out at the airport and we've got a couple of different uh, disturbances there's the one that's what gave us the rain earlier in the week and that's moving on out of here but that's being replaced by a nice northwesterly flow in the atmosphere and that's going to start uh, producing some showers late this afternoon and then on into tonight they're going to be coming down here from the north and that's that's why the uh, well with all the humidity out there and very unstable atmosphere, the storm prediction center has a marginal risk for some severe storms. The high winds and hail would be the biggest threats with this. And again, this is going to be late this afternoon and then by the evening hours work its way down to the south. And we've, with this north northerly flow in the atmosphere, what's nice about it is you get these little kind of glitches, little disturbances to pop up and they just start racing down in our direction. So that's going to be this the situation and it's going to be encouraging for the, even the next couple of nights today. Mostly cloudy, obviously very warm, very humid. Humidity is way up this morning. A couple of the showers and thunderstorms basically to the north and then they will continue to work their way south overnight and into tomorrow and we'll have a uh, couple of showers around some thunderstorms in the morning hours and then we may do it again tomorrow night and even into Sunday and then maybe even late Sunday more or another chance for some rain more of those little disturbances moving on through here. Let's hope for it because the first week of August is going to be heating up. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. And once again, you see, well, now there you go. Spots on the map. Yeah, unfortunately, we got an accident, Mike. Northbound 151. So if you do have to go northbound 151, that's coming from 410 to 1604. We have a two car accident there right before Hunt Lane. This accident's been active for about 25 minutes now. Uh, two records were on scene, and it should be getting cleared up any minute, not causing any traffic right now. So that's good news there. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guy here. The construction on 10 Dominion looks about completed. Traffic is flowing very smoothly there right now. We still have uh, some some construction barrels there that are uh, uh, closing down one lane. But other than that, two lanes are open and things are freely flowing there on I-10. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Police say it may have been a setup. A teenager shot and killed outside his North San Antonio home. Our Katrina Weber is live on McCullough Avenue near Oblate. Katrina, have they had any luck tracking down the shooter? Not as far as we know. The last word we had is that police were looking for three men who went running right down the street toward Oblate. Now, just within the last few minutes, they have expanded their crime scene. You'll notice that we are farther back than we were from the house where this happened. It's just down in the middle of this police tape. Uh, about 4.30 is when police got the call. They found the 17-year-old uh, boy down in the front of the house, out, outside the house. His girlfriend was with him at the time. She told him that they came outside to smoke with friends. That's, those were her words, according to police. And uh, one of those people who they were meeting outside suddenly ambushed the 17-year-old, according to police, shooting him in the head. And he did die here at the scene. And again, the three guys who were here to meet with the victim and his girlfriend took off running. Police, less, the last word they had was that they did run onto Oblate Street. They were not able to offer us much of a description at all on the shooter who got away. But they are, again, investigating. And like I said, they just expanded the area where they're looking for evidence. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a woman is in the hospital with burns after a house fire on the far west side. Firefighters arrived at the house in the 8800 block of Flint Valley around 4 this morning. That's near HEB on Marbuck and, and Loop 410. They say the fire started in the bedroom where a woman was sleeping. She was able to get out of the house with minor burns. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused the fire. 635 United States and continuing to see a record number of deaths from the coronavirus with increases in more than 30 states. The toll is having an impact on the economy as well. 1.4 million more Americans filed for unemployment as critical critical benefits are set to expire. NBC's Alex Perche has more this morning from Washington. Good morning. Researchers are now forecasting another 80,000 deaths from COVID in the U.S. by November, and they warn that number could grow higher if Americans don't wear masks. This morning, the U.S. grappling with both health and economic emergencies. Coronavirus deaths continue to climb, now over 151,000. And now a grim new warning from an association of medical colleges. If the nation doesn't change its course and soon, deaths could be well into the multiple hundreds of thousands. 
The silver lining? FEMA reported fewer cases, down an average of 3% from last week. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying this on CNN. I don't think we need to go to lockdown again. But the virus has hit the economy hard already. Data shows it contracted at an annual rate of nearly 33% from April to June, the worst number since records began at the end of World War II. Consumer spending absolutely dropped off a cliff. That means livelihoods threatened and long lines for food like this scene in Los Angeles. It's help a lot. 1.4 million people filed for unemployment last week, just as those emergency $600 benefit checks for 30 million Americans are set to expire. Senate Republicans made a last minute attempt to extend these benefits, but at just $200, something the Democrats rejected, calling it a callous political move and saying that we need a more comprehensive plan. But even if these two sides can come to an agreement here, it's something that will likely take weeks. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Dr. Anthony Fauci will return to Capitol Hill today where he will testify in front of a House committee investigating the pandemic. Dr. Fauci will be joined by other government health experts as well. He's expected to give an update about the virus in the country and how early progress on combating the virus seems to have been lost. Big news overnight. National Hurricane Center has upgraded Tropical Storm Isaias to a Category 1 hurricane. As of midnight, Isaias was near the southernmost island in the Bahamas, moving northwest with maximum sustained winds of about 80 miles an hour. A hurricane warning has been issued for the central and southeastern Bahamas. To follow the latest developments, be sure to download the KSAT weather app and use the hurricane tracking feature. With August fast approaching, the upcoming school year has been on a lot of people's minds. Teachers and parents, of course, being forced to adjust to educating during a global pandemic. And it's not just classes impacted. Extracurriculars and sports are also taking a big hit. For this week's episode of KSAT Explains, RJ Marquez takes a look at the unprecedented decision from UIL to start the football season late. There's nothing like Friday night football in Texas, but like everything else in our state, the coronavirus pandemic has put the future of high school athletics this fall in jeopardy. I can't remember in all my years of doing high school football, and that takes me all the way back to when I was you know, 16 years old. First of all, the high school football season has never been delayed, and now being, being delayed due to a virus. Coaches are normally getting ready for August camps, but that will have to wait. The University Interscholastic League delayed the start of practice for the larger school districts in Texas until September 7th, with volleyball games starting September 14th and football starting 10 days later. UIL is also limiting fans in the stands to 50% capacity. Those at games will be asked to wear face coverings and social distance. The biggest thing for me and, and for all of us, I think, is, is just come to the realization that Things are going to be different. I mean, you make adjustments as you go, and I talk to our kids about it all the time. You just adapt, improvise, and overcome. We have to be flexible with this, and it has to be a sliding scale. These COVID cases still continue on through August, and it's going to have to be pushed back even further, perhaps even to the spring. Workouts and conditioning camps held earlier this summer helped coaches and players adjust to new health and safety protocols, but a spike in COVID cases put those camps on hold. Now coaches are missing out on important daily interactions with players. And that opportunity to visit with kids, to, to talk life, to talk, you know, whatever it is, and problems and help with problem solving and those kind of things. School is so much bigger than pen and paper or in our regards, football, X's and O's. High school sports, specifically football, are a way of life across Texas, so it would be hard to imagine any stadium across the state, including the iconic Alamo Stadium right here in San Antonio, staying empty this fall. And I think people are proud of where they grew up. They're proud of where they went to high school. They enjoy watching the games. They enjoy hearing the score. They enjoy watching the highlights. So it brings the community together. I think athletics lie at the heart and soul of every community. Still, Coach Carroll says a sport shouldn't be valued more than health and human lives. And while he waits to see what will happen, he trusts that the UIL and coaches across the state will keep that in mind. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Latest edition of KSAT Explains. Check it out online, KSAT.com, and on the KSAT TV app. It's 641 and 80 degrees. Glad you're with us. Any educator will tell you that missing school is detrimental to students, and now researchers are backing the empirical claim. Join us.
When kids miss school, it can cause more problems than you think. A new study shows researchers found a correlation between kids missing class and having more difficulties in life. Experts say missing school was often linked to poor education and financial situations. It also led to lower participation in local and national elections compared to those who attended school regularly. Students who had a solid attendance record in elementary and middle school also had better academic scores in high school. They're also more likely to attend college. Experts found more absences in school also led to bad financial situations, and students who didn't go to school had a harder time finding jobs and keeping up with their bills. Meanwhile, with the start of the school year on so many people's mind, there was no information in regards to the current pandemic, but research also shows that it is better for kids to go back to the classroom when it is safe. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 645. We're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Sarah. All right, right now we have that accident on 151 in uh, North Hunt Lane. It is just about clear, just like that. Perfect. It went off the screen. That's pretty awesome there. So let's take a look at drive times on 151. If you're on eastbound 151 from 1604 to 90, it's a nine minute ride. And if you're on 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, an 11 minute ride. Good times there. All right, now let's take a look at I-10 at Bernie Stage there. That's looking really good right now. 10 at the Dominion, one lane still shut down, but two lanes open and it looks great. And 10 at Hewerman looking very good as well. And that's good news for everybody. And now I'm gonna toss to Sarah. Because we have a special birthday boy in the Aww. house. Mark will be turning 38 this Sunday. Happy oh, birthday, Mark. Oh, oh, we love our Mark Austin. I'm 38? Yeah. I mean, I'm 38. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm 30. Oh, uh, and you're Truman. Truman. Oh, we love Mark. We hope you have a good Sunday. Thank you, guys. Who's that the little puppy? Awesome. That's my step puppy, Hunter. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Those he's are good adorable. pictures there, Mark. Thank you, guys. But we cannot oh, forget oh, about Mike's birthday on Monday. Mm -hmm. Why? Mike was delivered with a suit on already. <laughs> what? You, you were delivered. You came out with a suit on already. You had a box <laughs> square everything, didn't you? Oh, look how look handsome. That. Okay, that's the, your son is your doppelganger. I'm I know. not even kidding. <laughs> but oh, Mike will be turning I see my, I 39 see my, also. My, okay, that's not even close. <laughs> so my birthday is Sunday. Yours is my, Monday. Mine is Monday, correct. Okay, Man. gotcha. And uh, birthday, thank you guys. for guys. Nick is coming up mid-month. Well, I guess i got to sing a little hit for y'all real quick. Me and Sarah, ready? Happy birthday to you. How does she get the low part of the harmony? <laughs> <laughs> and many more. Oh, you guys. Happy birthday, boys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, three Leos here. Yeah, I know. That's a little That's scary. Very strong personalities. Mm -hmm. Fiery. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> but, but thank you for that. All right. Beautiful view. I love this picture right there along the, the river walk. That's just great. And all the trees around there, even on the hottest day, it is nice to uh, walk there along the, the river walk. We've got a lot of clouds hanging around here, starting to uh, lighten up a little bit, obviously. And this is the, the big story again this morning, the dew point temperatures, which are once again, you know, we were getting a break in the humidity a couple of mornings ago, but now these numbers are back up into the mid 70s, which just means you walk outside and, and it's just like a slap in the face almost with all that humidity. It feels like 85 degrees right now. 87 is the heat index right now in New Braunfels. So we've got, and this is what I showed you off the top of this half hour, there was the disturbance that gave us the rain earlier this week. That moved on out of here. And now on the heels of that, we've got this nice northerly flow in the atmosphere. This is the water vapor imagery. And this is what is going to give us the good rain chances later on this evening, actually starting kind of later on today. This computer model has a few uh, showers that are going to be developing northern, well north of the uh, hill country. And then by mid afternoon, obviously everything continues to work its way down to the south. And by dinner time, we may have a few of these scattered showers, even a couple of thunderstorms around the area. And with all this humidity in the air, you could see a couple of decent downpours with some of these uh, thunderstorms that do develop. And then these are going to continue to work their way down to the south throughout the mid evening hours and then overnight into tomorrow morning. So a few of those showers and thunderstorms will be scattered about the area even uh, tomorrow morning. And then it looks like could do it all over again by tomorrow evening and into Sunday morning. But for today, Storm Prediction Center does have the marginal risk for severe storms. Northern half of our area just cut it right in half along 90 and 10. And this is, would be for high winds and hail would be the biggest threats with any of these thunderstorms that do pop up. 
step back, look at the big picture, and you can see here's a low right there up to the north of us. That in combination with that high, that's really the dominant feature. That's what's keeping us in this north to northwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere. That will continue to send down some of these little uh, little disturbances to at least give us rain chances, not only tonight into tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow night, Sunday, and maybe even, if we're lucky, Sunday night into Monday. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on things over the weekend. As far as the forecast today, 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today, 98, still going to be very hot. Humidity is going to make it feel like the low hundreds, but we'll start to see some of those showers and even a couple of thunderstorms developing and working their way from north to south. And that'll be the case overnight into tomorrow morning. And then looks like we may do it all again tomorrow night into Sunday. Like I said, wishful thinking, hopefully into Monday morning as well, because after that, it's going to be toasty hot. Well, talk about wishful thinking. I'm still trying to pretend that Sunday's my 38th birthday because that's not even close. We'll just say it. We'll keep it at that. Okay, cool. Me neither. The good Don't news, let him know. Mike's older. Who knew? <laughs> 650, 80 degrees. Well, business experts say it's the perfect time to make your passion a reality as people spend more time at home during the pandemic. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll give you some advice on getting a business started and how to adapt to the new normal. Hey, but remember something, Mike. You've always looked way more distinguished than yours truly. Just saying. Oh, you're very kind. Live cam. News you need to know before you go is coming you owe up. Me money or something? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good morning. Coming up on GMA, Florida bracing for that hurricane ripping through the Caribbean. This amid the COVID-19 crisis. The storm upgraded to a Category 1 hurricane overnight and causing catastrophic flash flooding and mudslides in Puerto Rico. I am in Miami with the latest track and forecast for the U.S. It's a call coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. Coming up to G on GMSA 9, there's a growing concern among parents and teachers over how they'll manage teaching during a pandemic while ensuring a high quality of education for students. They take in their frustrations, questions, and ideas to a new Facebook community. Our Alicia Barretta will tell us more about Corn Teach at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's check traffic right now at 655 with Officer Nick Solis. Nick, how are we looking? We're looking good, Mark. We're going straight to Transguide here. Tenant Bernie Stage looking good now that construction. Things are opening up there as we speak. There's Tenant Dominion. One lane still blocked off due to construction, but those two lanes are flowing smoothly right now. Good news for everybody. Tenant Hureman as well is looking great and uh, just, you know, accidents around the city, so you have a smooth ride. Mike? We have got very humid conditions. It's, it's really humid when you step outside again this morning, and temperatures are in the upper 70s, even a couple of low 80s around the area, but the heat index makes it feel like about the mid 80s. Make it up to 90, new 98 for high temperature. We're going to start to see a few scattered showers and thunderstorms developing, especially going into tonight. They'll be working from uh, north to south, and some of those could be on the strong side, so the uh, Storm Prediction Center does have the marginal risk for a severe storm in the northern half of our viewing area. And We'll have some of those lingering over into tomorrow morning and maybe even do it all again tomorrow night into Sunday as far as a few disturbances, then heating up next week. All right, let's say good luck to our San Antonio Spurs. First of eight games tonight, taking on the Sacramento Kings tonight at 7 o'clock. Make it a birthday present for Mark and Mike. I hope so. See you at 9.